Let's take another look at a quadratic inequality. Now before I can go about finding those critical values, I really need to move my terms so that they're all on the same side and so that I have zero on the other side. When I do that, I also want to make sure that I leave my lead coefficient positive. So this guy's already positive, so what I want to do is I want to move these two terms over to the left side. So I just need to subtract them over. So 12x squared minus 4x minus 1 is less than or equal to 0. So we just showed a couple of ways of figuring this out, figuring out what our solution set is going to be. If we know that we have something that's going to be a parabola that opens up, we just need to find these critical values and then we're pretty much going to be done. Since this inequality says you want to be less than or equal to zero, that means that you already know, here we go, that you're looking for this region here because this is what's going to give you values that are below the x-axis. So all I need to do is to find those critical values. So let's do that. Now to correctly and accurately find those critical values, we want to rewrite this as an equation. So we rewrite this as 12x squared minus 4x minus 1 equals 0, and you solve that quadratic equation. Okay. So let's see if we can factor, right? If we can factor, things should be pretty simple. So 12 times 1 is 12, and are there factors of 12 that subtract to 4? Well, yeah, the answer would be 2 and 6. So I can rewrite, I can rewrite this to be plus 2x minus 6x, that's going to give me a negative 4x, so that looks pretty good. And then we can do factoring by grouping. If that's the way you'd like to do it, go for it. So in the first group, the common factor here is 2x. If I factor that out, I have 6x plus 1. The second group begins with a negative, so I need to factor that out. And the only thing that 6x and 1 have in common would be a factor of 1. Although not necessary to write, we do have to include that in the final step. So let's go ahead and write it right there. Alright, so 6x plus 1 is the same, so we can finish the factoring by grouping. 6x plus 1 times 2x minus 1. So this is factoring so that we can identify those critical values by using the zero factor theorem. So x is equal to negative 1 over 6 and the other critical value x is equal to positive 1 half. So as long as we have these guys in the right order up here we can say that this is negative 1 over 6 and this critical value is 1 half. And knowing that we're supposed to be looking for that region that is below the x-axis because this says less than or equal to, we're looking for this shaded region in between. And because it says equal to, that means these guys will be filled in. And from there we can go straight to our solution set. So we're going from negative one-sixth to positive one-half since we are including both ends we do brackets on both ends and and that's it so as long as you know your shape you find those critical values and you know whether you need to be above or below the x-axis but let's take another look at the sine chart because when things get more complicated the sine chart is really useful now we've already taken this polynomial and we factored it. So let's use those factors. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. All right, so we look at these factors individually. And then we're going to see what those signs look like when we put them back together in that product. So we have two factors. We have two critical values. I'm going to mark off here and here. The correct order is negative 1 over 6 and 1 half. And so I just draw dashed lines to create the separation in my intervals. Okay. 
for 6x minus 1, don't worry about the 2x minus 1 yet, for 6x plus 1, the critical value matches up with this one right here. So I put a 0. And again, as long as you have a positive coefficient, we expect to have this line that's increasing, which means he's coming from negative values. He crosses the x-axis at negative 1 over 6, and that line just goes up and up and up forever and ever in that positive direction. For 2x minus 1, his critical value is here at positive 1 half. So before he gets to 1 half, he's underneath the x-axis and he's going to be negative. And then that factor becomes positive once you get beyond 1 half. Now I don't want you to say, but I thought the parabola does this. Yep, the parabola does. But I'm looking at it in terms of its two linear factors. And those linear factors are lines whenever you graph them. So, just as before, region by region, let's look at what we have. In this region, for anything that's less than negative 1 over 6, you're going to have a negative factor times a negative factor, which gives you something that's positive. In the region in the middle, positive times negative is negative. In the region on the right, these guys are both positive. And at the critical values themselves, you're going to be zero. So regard regardless of what we're looking for, the pattern for this polynomial expression is going to give you positive values, that's going to be zero, then negative values, zero, positive. And that's the same thing we saw with our graph. He's positive, he comes down, he hits the x-axis, so he's zero, he's negative underneath, zero again, and then he becomes positive. So we're talking about the output values. For this inequality, we wanted those guys that were less than or equal to zero. Okay, so less than or equal to zero, what does that mean? Well, less than zero means negative. Equal to zero means including those places where we can be equal to zero, like that. So I've colored in all the little pieces that satisfy less than or equal to zero, and when you translate that when you translate that down here to the number line, it's this region in between. And because of the equal to part, we get to fill in those endpoints. And so from here, we write our interval notation. So included, so that's going to be bracket, negative 1 over 6 to 1 half. Again, that's included, so that's a bracket. So it's the same answer that we had up above, we just used a sign chart. Now the next example adds an extra, uh, extra layer of difficulty. But if you can create a sign chart, you're going to be in good shape.